So I'm going to go over some of the reasons why adoptions fail. And then at the end of this video or later on in the video, I'll give you some real life examples of uh, situations where a child has not been adopted because of some of these reasons. So let's go. One, two, three. Let's go. There's two ways of things not working out. Uh, one is a disrupted adoption and one is a dissolved adoption. So disrupted adoption is when a foster child is placed with you. Either they've already been with you in foster care or they've just been placed with you with the intent of adoption. You're riding out that six month waiting period. At least that's in, in this state. You have to wait six months before uh, you can adopt them after they've been actually moved into your home. And so you're, you're waiting for those six months and during those six months, you're like, oh, huh. And for whatever reason, it doesn't work out. And, and that is called a disrupted adoption, all right? The, the second thing is a dissolved adoption. So if a child has already been placed with you, maybe they've been with you for years and something happens and it's just not gonna work. Like you, it's just, it's killing your family or whatever, that would actually be a dissolved adoption. All right, so we're going to look into the reasons why these happen. Let me first say there's been a few high profile cases of this happening where people have adopted and then it's fallen apart. And we're really quick to judge. The world is really quick to judge that. And, and maybe rightfully so sometimes, but, but also you just don't know. You don't know until you've walked a mile in the shoes. So be really slow to judge a family that's gone through this. As we go through some of the possible reasons why people dissolve or disrupt an adoption, why adoptions fail, you might get a better understanding. Uh, adoption is a commitment. It is. However, it's not supposed to be a commitment. It's supposed to be a, let's make sure this works. It's the whole purpose. It's like a, a six month trial before that child is actually adopted legally by your family. That said, every time a child moves, it does a little bit of damage to their ability to attach, which it takes forever to repair. I mean, it, it can it, it can be uh, something that they work through and, and it gets healed over time, but it's really hard. And, and so we do want to minimize how often kids move. I'm just saying, if you take a child into your home, you better be pretty sure you're going to adopt them because it's really hurting their chances of being adopted later by someone else. This is a hard realization for a lot of us who are in the system, right? But we, we have to realize that if you take a child into your home, you better be ready to take them, like into an adoptive placement. Uh, you better be ready to adopt them. Okay, first off, uh, first reason, honestly, is misinformation. So multiple times, workers have intentionally left information out when they were placing a child with us. And, and this happens with a lot of my friends as well in, in foster care adoption world. The, the workers think they know that this is a perfect fit for you or, or they're desperate to find a fit for this child, find a place for the child. And so they leave stuff out. That is one reason there's misinformation given by social workers. All right, number two, child's behaviors. We thought they'd be manageable and yet they're not, okay? So sometimes children's behaviors are so extreme that someone just says, no, we, we, we thought this was doable, but we can't. Number three, the child's special needs were much more intense than we thought they were. Uh, and that can mean several things. It can mean that the child needs around the clock care and we didn't realize that. It could mean that the child has two or three appointments every day and we didn't realize that. It, it can mean a lot of things, all right? But one way or the other, the special needs were, were much greater than we thought they were and that doesn't work with our family. The child just isn't a good fit. Um, this can mean several things. This can mean that uh, the child bullies the other children in the home. It could mean that they hate the other children in the home and the other children in their home hate the child. It could mean that you just don't feel any connection. It's like you have a stranger living in your home even two months later. 
very possible. I mean, this, this is very likely. And, and in fact, in fact, a lot of adoptions don't happen because of this reason. It happens. If they've done their due diligence, they've searched for people for a while before a child moves into this adoption process. However, sometimes people show up and they at least have to be considered. They've got to be heard out. It doesn't mean that they'll be placed with that person necessarily, but it definitely will delay the process. But very likely, if there's someone who's a relative, even a somewhat distant relative, then they're going to have a good chance of getting that placement. So even if they've been placed to be adopted with you, right? If you've already adopted, they're yours. That relative shows up. It's, it's kind of like tough luck, you know? And, and I say tough luck, but hopefully if that relative really wants a connection with that child, hopefully that's something that you can pursue with them because that would be really cool. The adoption process could fail with a child is there's some change in circumstances that no longer allow the family to be licensed as a foster adoptive family. And that could be that they have to move out of state for a job. It could be uh, actually a whole number of things, unfortunately. So this seems like a silly reason for a child to not be adopted, but, uh, but those, those kinds of changes really happen and really do affect adoptions. The last reason why sometimes adoptions don't work out, and this is one I almost didn't include, but the last reason that I've seen happen several times, again, my mom was a social worker for 21 years, uh, director of an agency, all that stuff. And I've been around it. I've been doing foster care now for quite a few years and been around it for a long time. One of the things that actually does happen, social worker leaves their job. The new social worker comes in and wants to make some changes. And the child is moved out of an adoptive placement. It happens a lot. Social workers sometimes not knowing the full situation. Social workers sometimes just wanting to make changes for the sake of making changes. And again, most social workers are awesome and amazing, and we've had such good luck. We, we have. We've had such a good experience with social workers. But I've, again, I've seen this happen that quite, quite a bit, actually. It's, it's scary how often this has happened over the course of 30 years, okay? Scary as in it shouldn't even happen once, and I'm, I'm looking at eight or nine times that I know of over the course of 30 years where a new social worker comes in, this family's ready to adopt this child, and the social worker's like, mm, no, I don't think they're as good of a fit. And often that child goes to another family and that family doesn't want to adopt the child. <laughs> As it, you know, it's like, again, every time a child is moved, it hurts the child and it hurts their ability to attach. So movement just for the sake of movement or just because a social worker has a personality conflict with the family really, really, really harms that child. So those are some of the main reasons why these adoptions fail. So now that we've covered some of the reasons why adoptions fail, let's talk about some real life examples. Okay, so we had a child with us who we had just found out. Had, they'd been with us for a long time in foster care, and we had just found out that it was likely headed towards adoption, and I was so excited about that. Like, this was my child. Like, this was a good fit in our family, this child. Uh, so good and very excited. And then that child had a behavior that uh, towards another child that scared the social workers, and the social workers decided that it wasn't safe for them to be in a family with another child or like, you know, would, wasn't safe for that child to be in our family. And so they were removed and that hurt big time. But so, you know, behaviors matter. Sometimes behaviors have a huge impact. Now, the other instance we've had uh, was that a relatively young worker didn't have a lot of experience took the child out to eat several times, played some board games with them, read all this stuff in the child's file, but was like, that's not this child. There's no way this child would be destructive and threatening and try to stab someone with a knife. That's not them. I'm just going to leave that out of everything I say. We're going to pretend like that didn't happen because I don't believe it happened because he's such a polite child when we play board games together. So so that's happened. All right. Uh, another, another potential behavior. We've had a child placed with us with the intent to adopt, who was very aggressive and threatened to kill a number of people, but kept trying to do that, we'll just say, and very, very destructive, very aggressive. Not all the time, but out of nowhere, suddenly we were, we were dealing with a very aggressive child and the child was strong. And so that was hard. I mean, it was very difficult police call and all of that. Okay. After a number of those times, we had to decide for the safety of our family and for the other children in our family 
and also for all the kids that we could potentially have, that it, it just wasn't going to be safe for that child to come and live with us. You know, if we've had foster kids with us who are violent, they've had to go. It, I mean, like, not just violent as in a punch again, but like really violent. If we have foster kids with us who are continually sneaking alcohol or drugs into the house, and I mean continually, like if, if they're caught once, get treatment, fine, we'll walk through them with that. But if it's like a constant, this is, this keeps happening, uh, then, then they have to go. Uh, it's just not going to work in our family setting. So there's, there's a number of possibilities as you're looking at adopting a child through foster care for why it may not work out. In, in the way, I'm kind of going to give the opposite of an example, <laughs> because this is one reason why I was thinking that things wouldn't work out with Robert. And, and they obviously have, and it's been beautiful, and I'm so glad they did. But early on, the first couple years, I didn't feel like there was an attachment from him. I didn't feel like he was really doing that at all. And I'm like, man, this was this is just not a good fit. And I, I really questioned whether he should be adopted. Fortunately, that didn't stop me, and I went through the process. And it, it took a couple more years, really, for him to attach to me. And we are. We're very connected. But it took a long time for that to happen. And he'd been through so much. And uh, even though he hadn't been in, in a lot of other foster placements, he'd been bounced around to different family members and all this stuff. And so the attachment stuff was there, and it was very real. And so he did not want to attach to me. So that took a while. And, and that's one reason why possibly... It couldn't work out if people are thinking, man, this kid's just not connected. Like they're just not connecting to us. And so to them, I would say it takes a long time. It really does. Think about what the child has been through, how many people they've been bounced to or, or whatever their situation is. It, it's really hard for a kid to trust enough to connect with you that you're going to be there permanently when someone else hasn't been or maybe a whole line of someone else's haven't been. So for all the things I've seen where families have decided not to go through with adoptions or a family has adopted a child and then they've, I can't even say it, they've let go, right? They've, they've ended that adoption. For all the things that I've seen where that's happened, more often I've seen families that have walked through the storm, that have dealt with the behaviors, that realize it's a long-term process, a long-term issue. I've seen families who they've realized their child needs some intense treatment for a while. The child gets some severe help, even sometimes going to like a residential treatment facility for a time so the family can be safe and the child can get the help they need. I, I've seen these things happen more often than I've seen families give up on a child who's in the adoptive process or who's been adopted, I should say. Again, in the adoptive process, that's six months before an adoption, typically like a, a lot of families see that as a, a trial time. And in a way, it, I mean, legally it's set up to be a trial time. And so those fall apart a lot. But again, so often I've seen families walk through the storm with kids. So often. So let's leave it on that note, shall we? <laughs> All right. Have a great one.